Hey everybody, it's Bruno. If you want to be our next guest on MB, click on the Be My Next Guest link below. Hope you enjoy this episode and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Dana and B in our program here today talking about insurance. Yes. And here's a question for you. You had a, a, a little clip about, see I watch your stuff. Yes. Right? <laughs> um, and I'm forwarded your stuff. So there was a clip of saying when to shop your policy. Mm -hmm. And that was just, I can't remember when you did that one, but it was that was an interesting one because a lot of people you're talking about CFOs and everything. I think I remember which video you Yeah, you're about. saying, you know what? They kind of, some have this attitude, always partner and trust. Right. Like to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have the other ones that say you're kind of like your industry, not you, but your industry is like a barber. You get a bad haircut, go to the next one. Mm -hmm. And you had an interesting clip. So guys out there, people out there, go check it out. But let's talk about that what, what is your opinion about that shopping around every week every year every 10 years I think the context that I made that video was um, warning signs mm -hmm. so if there, the, I was giving some warning signs these are some things to look out for if your insurance policy doesn't have tick these boxes then I would question your insurance broker and I would get a second opinion and in that case I was talking about the property policy specifically the right. tenants improvements um, because uh, anytime that I'm looking at an insurance policy for a mid-sized company, any kind, in any industry, the property insurance is relatively simple. We know what kind of uh, building it is, like is it concrete, is it frame, how big is it, um, how, like, how much are the tenant improvements worth, stuff like that. Like it's, it's, it's pretty black and white. And so I can always point out very easily if there are mistakes there, whereas the liability policy which is usually the most expensive part of uh, your insurance program that you're purchasing, it's very difficult to find mistakes mm -hmm. and inconsistencies because how your liability policy is created with the insurance company okay. is based off of background, like uh, back-end conversations between your broker and your insurance company. You can't see that on the insurance policy. Um, so um, getting back to your question, um, the, if you see issues on your property policy and things are incorrect, then it's a big red flag that there are other issues on your liability policy and that's when I would um, ask for a second opinion with a different insurance broker. We got Dana and me talking about uh, business interruption. I know you have another video on that. Sure. Uh, number one thing businesses kind of take for granted or <laughs> so business interruption on on the IT side yeah so I mean that there's just so much variation out there sure. and it's it's not like property insurance where it's pretty much um, boilerplate nowadays mm -hmm. on what insurance companies offer I'm sure that there are insurance companies out there that will offer business interruption on the cyber security portion and your software um, I haven't really run into one right now but I mean that's one of the things too that you can talk to your insurance broker about and creating manuscript wordings sure. and creating a, an insurance policy there. But again, I would say that business interruption is again triggered by the insured peril happening to your own property or a first party policy. And cyber liability is typically a third party policy. Um, so you can insure the software, but yeah. That, you, you would have a claim against, I guess, the your IT provider, I guess. Yes. If they keep you down. Exactly. So. Um, that and that be a case where your IT company they should have an E and O policy or prof right. professional liability policy. And if your IT, like let's say you are on the cloud, um, and your IT company is the one that's um, facilitating all that, and then mm -hmm. the cloud goes down, and now you're having, um, and now your business is non-operational because the cloud has gone down. You're right. That'd be more a case where you're suing your IT company for the business interruption loss, right. but you're suing someone else's uh, insurance. Someone else's insurance is triggered. It's not so much yours that is sure. triggered. Yeah. So this is why I really like talking to Dana. <laughs> because you are fearless in talking about these things. And here's a question for you. Okay. Are you ready? I'm not prepared for it. I don't know what you're going to ask. Oh, but yeah. Sure. No, but this, this whole IT cloud thing. Okay. In terms of insurance right now, it is... Uh, part of the pun is cloudy. It's a little dark and it's uh, nobody really knows the answer. But if, if I'm... Um, an IT company that's providing service to your your insurance company 
And now there's a breach in privacy. Yes. You guys are you know, a big privacy company. You have our social insurance numbers. You have all our numbers. You have our phone number. You know. Uh, yeah. Any, any any kind of footprint. You have our you know insurance companies have our blood types and you know yeah. depending on the if you're in the benefits business. What what can we do as a company that's I guess we can sue them, but what can we expect in terms of, you know, we call our insurance and say, you know, you're my provider and say, gee, somebody broke into my server, but it's hosted in the cloud. Do you actually go after them? That because, wouldn't be us that goes after okay. them. And again, this is one of those things where there's a lot of variation between different companies, but there is privacy legislation in Canada and in Alberta, and I think most provinces have it as well, where if, especially if certain information is now out in the wild because mm -hmm. it's been breached or because like one of your employees has accidentally um, sent out that information. As an example, a couple years ago, an AIDS clinic in the UK, um, they sent out a mass email and they meant to BCC everybody and they accidentally oh CC'd. Um, so that was a, a breach of security. So in that case, there, there are requirements requirements if certain information is is put out there where you have to um, inform your customers and you have to do it in a certain way and I believe it's by registered mail um, and it, it, it can get expensive for that reason then you have to hire mm -hmm. lawyers and you have to you probably have to hire a PR firm so those are all things that you can get coverage for with your insurance policy most I would say most cyber security uh, liability policies don't actually have that coverage so again mm -hmm. that's something where you need to read the wordings it's kind of the wild west when it comes to cyber security I'm glad you asked it so um, there is a lot of progress with my clients and I can see it like just in the way that they speak and the way that they look at me um, because a lot of times when they first approach me they're just looking for a lower rate Right. I'm like, yeah, of course, that makes sense. You want a lower price. That's bonus, yeah. But as we're going through the process and I end up talking to them, and usually we end up spending like three, four, or five hours together over the phone and, and in person, um, I can see that their mentality shifts. And then that's where I can see the progress. And I'm like, yes. So now they're not just mm -hmm. seeing me as someone who's getting them the lower, lowest rate. Now they're seeing me as uh, their broker partner. They're, they're trusting my... Um, the information that I'm giving them and and it's really great too especially when I have some of these I would say these larger like subcontractors or, or mid-sized general contractors and they are sending me like all of their contracts and the, and they're just like you know in some ways they're they become um I would almost say the word needy um, but it, to me it's a good thing because I want to make sure that you're taken care of on in, in that way so I'm happy to do it and I really love it when um, they're, they reach out to me on a regular basis and they're like, help me out with this. I'm like, okay, I would love yeah. to. So. so you become an extended department of, their, of the company. You're their, you're their risk company, I guess. Yeah, their risk bit. management sure. advisor. Yeah. Um, so how do you earn most of your new business? Um, I earn most of my new business by, um, I, it's a variety of means. So I mean, I do the traditional cold calling and knocking on doors, of course. I would say the videos don't actually earn me any new business, but it what? kind of, no, it doesn't actually, no. I don't think that it really um, triggers anyone saying like, I'm gonna pick up the phone I and see. give this person okay. a call. But if they happen to meet me at like a networking event or like they see me out there cold calling, like it just, it is a really good thing because I, I, I am coming from a position of authority, I guess, within my industry, and, and they can trust me for that reason. So. so what percentage of your business just renews now? Um, all of it. I, my clients, I think, will be my clients for mm -hmm. the long term, for sure. Like, they trust me. Um, so once you're in, you're in. Yeah. That, that's the type of business you're in, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a really good thing that they trust me, and I'm not shocked. I mean, like I said, I spend like three, four times... Uh, more time with them in the initial like process than probably other brokers and I ask like a million questions and I really get to know their business and um, like what their vulnerabilities are in terms of like their liabilities um, and yeah I, I feel like I know a lot about them and it just at that point it doesn't make sense for them to leave really mm -hmm. I mean, I've done such a good job for them so yeah no I, no I get that yeah it's, it's just that I would I would think that uh, it is a really tough thing to leave certain providers uh, in your business. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is your accounting provider, you know, or payroll provider. Right. Because everybody thinks that your payroll uh, renewing cycle has to be at the end of the year because it's too painful to do it. 
you know, to have people to, to move that, that yeah. fiscal year. For and sure. insurance is one of them. Yeah. Um, what are some of the pain points that we should kind of go? They're not really pain points. Just get over it and go shop your policy. Um, I mean, there's a lot of push right now. And I don't think that this is just in the insurance industry, but I think that this is just a push in general, like in our society, that people want things right now. Mm -hmm. They call an insurance broker and they want a quote tomorrow. Or they call in for a certificate of insurance and they want it within 15 minutes. And in some ways, I mean, it's not an absurd request because we do have the internet and people can theoretically get things done that quickly. But I would probably say that um, things don't need to be done that quickly. And, and there is value in taking your time and making sure that you're doing a thorough job. Um, so I, I would say that things don't need to be done immediately, but there's a, there's a huge push for that sometimes, especially in the construction industry. I mean, like a, a lot of mm -hmm. times people will call me and they're like, I'm on site right now and they won't let me in. I need a certificate of insurance. That's a valid request, sure. of course. Um, but Or bidding on a contract or something and you need certificates to validate your proposal or, or something like that. Or bonding, yeah, bonding, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's pretty much all the time we have for this episode today. Thank you for tuning in with us. And you know what? Make sure you subscribe to our Megapix media channel so you, you will never miss an episode. And also, you can follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we have content almost every day. So thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you guys soon.